Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, SARS-CoV-2 Diagnostic Workflow with the Geno Extract Flex T and the FluoroCycler XT. I am Jennifer Woods of LabRoots and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Bruker Daltonics. To learn more, visit Bruker.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Dr. Colleen Monahan, Product Manager for Diagnostic Systems, Hain Life Science, a Bruker company. Dr. Monahan, you may now begin your presentation. Hello everyone. Thank you for taking time to join this webinar and learn more about the Bruker SARS COVID-2 diagnostic workflow with the Geno Extract Flex T and the FluoroCycler XT. My name is Colleen Monaghan. I am Product Manager for the Diagnostic Instrumentation at Bruker in Nairn in Germany. I've been Product Manager for High Tech and Med Tech Industries for around 10 years. My background is Biomedical Engineering. I earned my degree from the University of Ulster in Jordanstown, which is close to my hometown of Belfast, and my PhD from the University of Twente in the Netherlands. I have been with Bruker for a short time, having joined in March, and I must say I am blown away with the high quality of the solutions, and I'm very excited to share these with you today. This is a short overview of what I would like to present today. The Bruker campus in Nieren in Germany was formerly Hein Life Science. I imagine that many of you may be familiar with Bruker, and I want to introduce you to the Hein Life Science part since this is key to understanding our strengths in terms of assay development. After this, I will jump into the impact that SARS has had on our company and how we had to rapidly switch course to support medical institutions. I would like to introduce you to our range of SARS assays and the devices we have to support these. And I am delighted to finish with feedback from our customer Ava Lab in Portugal. Let me give a brief glimpse into the history of our company. Founded in 1986 as a laboratory supplier, the company grew to what it is today. Evolving from simple resellers, we started to develop our own diagnostic tests, and this image shows the various milestones along the way. In 1996, we developed the DNA strip, which was based on line probe assay technology, which in 1996 really was state of the art, and actually, even though for some testing it might be considered outdated, it is still used prolifically with mycobacteria assays because you can collect a lot of information on each strip. However, as you may know, while the DNA strips provide a lot of information, they can be quite labor intensive. You can see that the evolution of our innovations tended to facilitate faster results with less and less hands-on time. Moving from the DNA strip to a somewhat faster solution, the GenoQuick, this was also based on the same technology as the DNA strip, but gave the user, saved the users considerable time. Next, we had a series of breakthroughs with fluorotype assays based on melting curve analysis. These were complete PCR tests, so analysis was also part of the PCR. For the first time, the results could be measured with optical thermocyclers, and we ensured that we could facilitate our users with devices to use these assays. Next came the real-time PCR assays, and our latest solution, based on liquid array technology, allows us to generate high-content information from our latest assays. We are proud of the developments we have had over the years, and in 2018, decided to join Bruker, where we combine our diagnostic strengths. To go further in the overall offering of what I will now informally refer to as Bruker Hein, you can see that we serve a number of markets. 
Hine Life Science is world renowned in the tuberculosis market and with a number of World Health Organization endorsements, in particular for tuberculosis tests, this has historically been one of our strongest areas. We have expanded our expertise to cover respiratory disease, which, as you can imagine, has become a focus with the dawn of SARS. Furthermore, we offer immunocompromised diagnostics with viral and fungal assays. Now with our latest liquid array technology, we are able to provide multiplex solutions on syndromic panels. Liquid array technology, which, as I mentioned, allows us to generate high content information from these assays. Since we want to guarantee the highest possible quality, we also provide extraction chemistry and instrumentation for extraction, as well as the PCR cyclers and, of course, easy-to-use software that comes with these systems. As everyone here is aware, in 2019, the COVID-19 pandemic struck. This was the worst pandemic seen since the Spanish flu. You can see here some figures of the infections and deaths. It is fair to say it had a huge impact on all of us. While we remain vigilant today, we remember that initially this was an incredibly tough time. As a key player in the life science market, we had to show leadership and guide our customers through this tough time. We all learned a lot and we are still learning from this experience. We quickly realized that our customers went from needing a broad range of assays with a broad range of throughput needs, from low to medium or medium to high throughput, to needing mainly SARS-CoV-2 assays, which would help them deal with each new wave of the pandemic, and they needed these at higher throughput. This timeline gives a summary of how we responded to various phases of the pandemic in terms of assay development. Initially, we went back to our distribution routes, and provided a real-time PCR assay from Primer Design. This helped us to serve our customers while we worked on our own assays for which we could offer full solution with our instruments. In May 2020, we launched our fluorotype SARS-CoV-2 Plus assay, which focused on detecting the actual presence of SARS. In winter 2020, we launched a multiplex assay, fluorotype SARS-CoV-2, with flu and RSV in preparation for what we believe would be the flu season. Do you remember first hearing about the variants? This caused a lot of disruption and unfortunately the COVID numbers that had started to decrease actually started to increase again. We responded quickly to this with an RUO solution, the fluorotype SARS-CoV-2 VAR-ID, to provide the market with much needed fast results. We were able to do this at this stage with PCR instead of needing gene sequencing. In May this year, we launched the IVD registered assay, fluorotype SARS-CoV-2 VAR-IDQ, which like the one before it, detects the variants and additionally provides quantification of viral load in accordance with the World Health Organization recommendations. And then, as you know, another wave of variants arose and we released our latest assay, the fluorotype SARS-CoV-2 AVO, again as an RUO to ensure that we support our customers as quickly as possible. I will go through most of these assays to give an idea of the differences and the advantages of each. As I said, the SARS-CoV-2 Plus was designed to simply detect the presence of the virus. It is hard to imagine with our collective knowledge today that only a year or a year and a half ago, not so much was known about the virus yet, or at least not enough. For this assay, we base the diagnosis on a dual target. This is a World Health Organization recommendation that we believe is important to adhere to. Furthermore, we wanted to be sure that the virus detected would have a low risk of mutation. And for this reason, we carefully selected the N gene and the RDRP gene. In the section results at a glance, you're observing an actual report that is automatically generated from the software of the device. The results are displayed in the form of graphs and summarized with the conclusion text. From this report, you can see how the software presents the presence or absence of the virus and provides a written conclusion in addition to the graphs. 
On the top row, sample 1 is positive for SARS-CoV-2, and on the next row, sample 2 does not exhibit the SARS-CoV-2 virus. As I mentioned already, we prepared for flu season with this highly multiplexed respiratory assay, SARS, flu and RSV. As a 4-in-1 detection, it significantly reduces the time compared to testing for each uh, compared to testing for each virus in, individually. Actually, it is worth noting that this assay can detect mixed infections. That means if a sample contains SARS and flu, or SARS and flu and RSV, these would all appear in these results. This report shows that the, simple, that the sample contained only SARS, but if the sample had also contained a flu virus, then either influenza A or influenza B would also be shown in red and indicate that the virus is present. We launched this last year for our low throughput extraction device, the Geno Extract. However, we know that people took many precautions last year, staying indoors, keeping social distancing and wearing masks. So the impact of flu was less than in other years. While we still don't know what will happen this winter season, we are extra prepared for this since we recently made this assay available on our high throughput device, the Geno Extract Flex T. We responded to the rise in presence of variants popping up with the SARS CoV 2 VAR IDQ. This assay can detect the presence of the S gene mutations listed here, and importantly, we can quantify the viral load according to the World Health Organization's international units per milliliter. In the graph here, represented by deletion 69 to 70 and the N501Y, two peaks appear in the gray area. This combination informs us that the alpha variant is likely to be present. Please look at the written values in this report, and you can also see that the international units per milliliter are displayed automatically in the software. How do we do this? Well, information about the World Health Organization standard is encrypted in the barcode, which can be found on the packaging of our assays. This barcode is scanned during the PCR analysis, and the software uses this value to calculate the accepted international units per milliliter, which we display in the result report, as I already explained, and as you can also see here. It is quite special that the user does not have to do calculations on their own, but that the international units are generated automatically and presented in the software. Why is it so important to quantify the viral load? As you can imagine, PCR results also providing a viral load can be much more valuable in many situations than a simple positive or negative result. Take, for example, patient management. If a patient has simply a positive result, this may cause them to remain hospitalized or in isolation. However, if a quantitative assessment has been made, the viral load will indicate whether this person is still infectious or if they are fine to re-enter society. Furthermore, patients may or may not respond to a given source treatment. If quantification of the viral load is made, this can provide an indication to the medical personnel that the treatment is not taking effect, and perhaps another treatment would be more useful. Beyond this, a person may be waiting for treatment for another disease, which would be delayed due to the simple positive PCR result. Delaying of some treatments can be detrimental to patients. Therefore, if the viral load is below a certain threshold, perhaps treatment for other diseases can begin. Finally, for other downstream applications like next generation sequencing, it is important that the best samples are selected. The quantification can be used to assess the sample quality for these purposes. Our latest assay, the SARS-CoV-2 AVO, has an RUO status to give our users faster access to the assay, since newly emerging variants are of major public concern. The AVO assay can detect the SARS gene and simultaneously differentiate four different S gene mutations. These are in turn used to help us identify variants. 
Identifying these variants helps to track their spread and enables epidemiological surveillance. And again, you can see the result report that would be observed in the Fluorocycler XT software. I have described how we responded to the pandemic with our various SARS assays. And as I explained earlier, to ensure high quality results, we also provide devices. So I will go over these devices since this helps elaborate on the workflow. We have a number of low and a number of medium to high throughput devices, as I show here. The Geno Extract and the Geno Extract Flex T are extraction devices. The Geno Extract is a 12 sample device, and the Flex T, as we call it, is an, ex is an extraction and PCR setup instrument for up to 96 samples. 95 when doing PCR setup. Our PCR amplification and detection devices are the Fluorocycler 12 and the Fluorocycler XT. Today I will focus on the higher throughput devices. However, keep in mind that it is possible to combine the devices in different ways. However, please also bear in mind that the source assays do not run on the Fluorocycler 12. The Geno Extract Flex T was launched in April 2021. It is a reliable medium to high throughput extraction device with automatic PCR setup, which means it can be used seamlessly with the Fluorocycler XT with minimal manual intervention needed from extraction to results. After a short setup, the samples, chemistry, and various parts needed for the extraction and PCR setup are placed on the external docking tray. The software guides the user through the few steps needed and the robotic arm puts the parts where they are required inside the device. Once running, you can move on to other tasks. Since the device is based on liquid handling, we can take advantage of TADM, that is total aspiration and dispense monitoring, which ensures that the pipetted volumes are highly accurate. The monitoring feature ensures that throughout the run, any error that might occur can be traced and affiliated with a given sample or indeed a given result. This prevents stoppage time, meaning that it, an entire run is not spoiled because of one sample. Furthermore, the erroneous result is tagged so that the user knows to discard the result from this particular run. Since you load all deck items from outside, you don't have to bend yourself into strange shapes as you reach inside to place deck tools. This not only reduces time, but reduces the chances of contamination of the samples. The result of this phase of the workflow is the ready-to-use PCR plate, which can be transferred to the Fluorocycler XT for PCR analysis. We have mentioned the Fluorocycler XT a few times already. This is a 96 sample PCR device with dedicated software for analysis and detection. It has superb quality where all aspects of PR, PCR cycles have been considered. Specific to this workflow, the PCR plate from the Geno Extract Flex T is heat sealed, then can be barcode scanned and inserted into the Fluorocycler XT. If you remember when I explained that the items are loaded externally and barcode scanned upon entry to the Geno Extract Flex T, the PCR plate would have been one of those items. And this is barcode scanned before being used in the Fluorocycler XT. Therefore, if connected to limbs, then the information can be traced. Again, easy step-by-step -step software guides the user through the process and PCR can quickly be started with minimal hands-on time between. Regarding the highlights indicated on this slide, the first point regarding maximal accuracy and homogeneity is referred to the highly controlled internal environment where we ensure the temperature is homogenous across the entire plate. The multiplexing capabilities refer to our ability to support 96 samples, but because we can also look at these in up to five channels, this leads to huge multiplexing capacity. This, with minimal crosstalk, means that we do not need any color compensation. Many of our customers rave about the Fluoro software, which is not only accurate, but is really easy to use. I think that you will agree from the result reports that I have shown throughout this presentation that the reports are very easy to interpret and 
please keep in mind that they are generated automatically. In addition to this, what I have not mentioned so far, because I am focusing on the SARS assays, which are our own assays, is that the Fluoro software also has an additional tool that allows users to analyze practically any assay of their choice. The comparison here at the bottom with sequencing is made in reference to the liquid array technology. This I will not go into in detail here, but you can hear more about this in a future webinar on the 2nd of November, where my colleague, Dr. Sandra burak Lange will go into detail about this, considering tuberculosis and mycobacteria. This slide is a summary of the workflow that I just explained. It shows that we start, obviously, with the samples, which, with the chemistry and the other parts needed, are automatically barcode scanned upon entry into the Geno Extract Flex T, where extraction and PCR setup takes place. The resulting PCR plate is automatically tracked from the Geno Extract Flex T to the Fluorocycler XT by means of simple barcode scanning. When connected to the limbs of the lab, this makes the results much easier to track to patient samples. Then, results are clearly presented in the software reports. Our take-home message is that we can provide fast results at top quality. With the combination of hardware, software, and of course the assays, there is certainty in every step of the process from extraction to PCR analysis. I have saved the best for last and wish to use the last few minutes to introduce our customer, Ava Lab. Established in Aveiro in Portugal, this lab has become one of the most important national labs in Portugal. They are renowned for their high scientific quality, ability to recruit and utilize state-of-the-art technology, and their strong experience. AvaLab is therefore known as one of the most experienced laboratories in clinical analysis in Portugal. The location we discuss here in Aveiro has more than 100 employees. The molecular biology department is fully equipped with an extraction room and an amplification detection room. The extraction room is equipped with six geno extracts a Geno Extract Flex T, and two safety cabinets. The amplification and detection room is equipped with three Fluorocycler XTs, a Fluorocycler 12, and another biological safety cabinet. The lab runs source assays, HLA B27, and MRSA. AvaLab participate in quality control programs, including the QCMD and also the World Health Organization for SARS-CoV-2. By the way, this picture was taken recently as my colleague was providing the training for the Geno Extract Flex T. Like all labs around the world, when COVID-19 struck, Ava Lab had to respond to a sudden surge in sample processing. In July 2020, the sample numbers increased to 120 samples per day. At this time point, they purchased the Fluorocycler XT and a Geno Extract. In August 2020, they needed another Geno Extract. Then, as the sample demand increased to 1,600 samples per day, that is 1,600 samples in one day, they not only needed another Geno Extract in September, but I was informed that staff were working for more than 18 hours per day to get through the sample volume. In November, they needed another Fluorocycler XT and Geno Extract but it didn't stop there. In July this year, they took on another Fluorocycler XT and two more Geno extracts. And in August this year, they were our prized first customers of the Geno Extract Flex T, which they tell us has improved the quality and ensures traceability of the results. Here is Dr. Elizabeth Costa, the supervisor of the Molecular Biology Department. Dr. Costa was generous enough to have some calls with me, even during her maternity leave, to say a few words about our systems. Explaining that we have the simplest extraction and amplification protocols that are easy and quick to understand. This is exactly what we like to hear and hope to continue to serve Dr. Costa and Ava Lab. 
Dr. Costa further commented on our Fluorocycler XT, saying that the software is reliable and easy to interpret. It provides high specificity and sensitivity, and the chance of human errors are decreased. She also told us that the lab had the chance to prove the accuracy of their results, comparing with international labs from around the world, proving that the results were correct. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Costa for this wonderful feedback and wish Ava Lab every success. I would also like to thank my colleagues whose knowledge and expertise in compiling this report for you has been invaluable. Finally, and importantly, I would like to thank you, the listeners. Thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you, Dr. Monahan, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you would like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. Also joining us for the Q&A, we have Alina Mertz, Senior Product Manager of SARS Assays. Okay, let's get started. Our first question is, how long does it take from sample to result? Thank you for your question. Um, so the, the from sample to result, it would take some minutes to of startup time, and then it takes up to around about two and a half hours for the extraction. Obvious, this is for 96 samples. Obviously, this is less when um, less samples are extracted. Then it takes an additional 18 minutes for the PCR setup. Um, and also, please keep in mind that there's no hands-on time in between these two steps. And then it's approximately one and a half hours for the PCR analysis in the Fluorocycler XT. Thank you, Dr. Monahan. The next question, what is the minimum number of samples I can process in the Geno Extract Flex T? Uh, so the minimum amount is 12 samples, but obviously, as I showed the different device, um, different devices in the portfolio, when, when people want to measure, I say only, but when 12 samples are approximately what would be desired, then I would say probably best to use the Geno Extract but um, the minimum is 12 and up until uh, any amount up until 96, yeah. All right, thank you again, Dr. Monahan. Our next question. In the multiplex test, do you detect RSVA and RSVB? Yeah, hi, this is uh, Lina speaking. We are actually detecting both of them. However, in this case, we do not differentiate them or identify them. Thank you, Alina. Our next question today, which SARS targets do you use to quantify? Well, for the quantitative SARS assay, we use the RDRP gene for the quantification. Um, however, the, the target for the SARS result would be both the RDRP gene and the N gene. Thank you again, Alina. Our next question, I have a fluorocycler 12. Can I use this with the SARS and Flex T? Um, actually, uh, unfortunately, no. The fluorocycler 12 doesn't um, hasn't been validated for the SARS assays. Um, so that would be the fluorocycler XT would be the the best fluorocycler to use in that case. All right. Thank you, Dr. Monahan. Uh, looks like we have time for one more question here. Outside of the pandemic, what other diagnostic solutions will be available on these platforms? Um, that's a lovely question. Um, so outside of the pandemic, that would be, so um, earlier on in the presentation, I gave the overview of the expertise, um, the, the list of assays that we provide. And actually, we are working towards um, validating these assays on both the Geno Extract Flex T and the Fluorocycler XT together. All right, thank you again, Dr. Monahan, uh, for your time today and for your important research. We would also like to thank Alina for joining us for the Q&A session uh, for your time, we appreciate it. 
And we would also like to thank Labroots and our sponsor, Bruker Daltonics, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. Labroots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.